Is turbulence in an airplane dangerous? The short answer is no, you don't need to worry. However, there is one main exception, and it's actually one that I experienced for the first time just the other day. I'll explain it all later on in this video. A quick bit about me. I'm a pilot in the Royal Air Force. I'm just coming to the end of my training, and on this channel I make videos about air crash investigations that I find quite interesting covering both the larger crashes, but also less well-known ones as well. And this is the first of potentially many kind of explain videos where I'll go into detail on any aviation related questions that you have. So what is turbulence then? So in very simple terms, turbulence is the movement of disruptive air in which an aircraft is flying through. Now the severity of that turbulence will depend on both the mass of the aircraft, so how big it is, how much it weighs, and the speed or direction or both in which the airflow is changed in that relative airflow that the aircraft is flying through. Now there are several different types of turbulence. I'm not going to go into too much detail now, but if you do have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. So the first one, mechanical turbulence, it's defined as airflow disruption over obstructions. So for example, buildings or hills. This usually only affects aircraft at lower levels. I think a good way to imagine how this looks is if you look at water and the flow around, let's say, a rock that you put in a stream, you can see that the water flow behind the rock is all disrupted. And that's very similar to how turbulence works. The next one is mountain waves or orographic turbulence. And as it sounds, this relates to airflow around mountain ranges, kind of similar to the mechanical turbulence with the disruption of air. But added to this, because of the height of the mountains, it causes a lot of temperature changes and speed and pressure changes with the air, which causes the turbulence to be much greater. There's another one called wake turbulence. Now this is much more predictive because this is created by large aircraft flying through the air. So from the wingtips of those aircraft, it creates something called vortices, which is basically large spirals of air which disrupt the airflow behind the aircraft. Now, air traffic control have become very good at dealing with this, and that's why you have delays between aircraft taking off, as it gives a chance for the airflow to stabilise behind those aircraft. This is also true at higher levels. If you're flying beneath and behind another aircraft, you can then be subjected to its weight turbulence. But pilots now are quite good at identifying this, and will just request a flight level change to jump out of that turbulence. The next one is convective turbulence, which usually occurs around thunderstorms, and also includes thermals and downdrafts and that sort of thing. Again, a little bit more predictable with thunderstorms, with weather reports and weather radars in the aircraft to avoid thunderstorms themselves, but also the area surrounding thunderstorms still creates some of that turbulence. And the last one is clear air turbulence. And I remember when I was younger, I was told that turbulence was created by clouds. And although there is some truth to this, it isn't always the case. And clear air turbulence is another form of turbulence that we have. As the name suggests, it can occur in clear air. There doesn't need to be any visible cloud. And one of the main areas that we get this is medium to high level, and it's where the jet streams are. Usually where two large air masses meet, it creates this big turbulent air pressure and creates these jet streams that blow at sometimes hundreds of miles per hour. Now these are easily avoided. There are weather charts that predict where they're going to be, and sometimes they can be used to our advantage. So for example, there was a British Airways flight flying from New York to London. An aircraft regularly flying jet streams, but this one in particular was blowing at 260 miles per hour as a tailwind. This meant that as the aircraft was inside it, it was reaching speeds of 825 miles per hour. And this was used to its advantage to arrive 80 minutes early at Heathrow in London. So also not all turbulence is bad, but turbulence is categorized into several different intensities. The first one being light, which as it suggests, is a very light turbulence on the aircraft. The next one is moderate. Now this, along with light turbulence, will be the turbulence that you've probably felt in the past. During moderate turbulence, it is described as having difficulty walking in the aircraft and also loose objects will be moving about. But the aircraft is always in control and it's only up to a maximum of 1G. The next level of intensity is severe. Now this is quite rare, but it does happen. This is described as being pushed violently against your seat belts and the aircraft is experiencing a greater than 1G force. It can also cause the aircraft to become out of control for very short periods and it can induce quite large speed changes. 
And it's usually in this sort of turbulence where people that aren't strapped in will then get thrown up against the roof of the aircraft. And this is where most of the injuries come from that relate to turbulence. And we'll go through the injuries in just a second. And the final intensity is extreme. Now this is only really relating to the sensors of hurricanes or really extreme storms. This is something that a civilian aircraft would just not experience. I think the only people that do are those crazy pilots in America that fly their C-130 into the center of hurricanes to gain as much data as they can from those hurricanes. It's also worth noting that pilots have training to deal with severe turbulence and they'll bring the aircraft speed down a little bit to both increase its stall protection range from both a high and a low stall and increases maneuvering speed as well. So as we mentioned earlier, talking about injuries, in America alone, there's about 58 people per year that are injured through turbulence. And most of these injuries are neck strain or whiplash. And it's usually when they're not strapped into their seats. So the advice I would always give, even if you're just sat in your seat for the duration of the flight, still have your seatbelt loosely fastened as if the aircraft does hit some turbulence, it will just keep you nice and secure in your seats. Now, most of those injuries actually occur to the cabin crew as they are always most at risk as they are very rarely strapped in when the aircraft does experience turbulence. Now, one thing I do see sometimes is people suggesting that turbulence can rip the wings off an aircraft. And this is practically an impossibility. So all aircraft wings are stress tested before they're put into production and used. And we'll use this A350 wing as an example. And the wing actually traveled 5.2 meters in its bend test. And it was tested beyond any max forces that the aircraft may experience in its lifetime and didn't come anywhere near to cracking. So as long as you're strapped into your seat, you and the aircraft will remain safe in any turbulence that the aircraft is expected to go through. So coming on to the part that I mentioned at the start of the video, when is turbulence dangerous? Now there's a type of turbulence called wind shear and this can be created by any of the previous types that we've discussed but it's usually quite a violent short-term version of one of those types. So the most dangerous time it can happen is when an aircraft is on approach or just after takeoff, as the aircraft is obviously lower to the ground. And how wind shear works is it's a violent change in wind direction or speed, and it will cause the aircraft to either lose or gain speed quite quickly or lose lift for quite quickly. And obviously, if you're close to the ground, you don't want to lose either of those things. But this is when it will be its most dangerous. When you're low to the ground, you get severe wind shear and the aircraft loses lift. So then it starts to fall out of the sky without a means of gaining the lift to then pull it back up into the sky. Now that being said, it is dangerous, but it also is extremely rare and also still recoverable, even if the aircraft experiences this. So I experienced this the other day. I was coming in for a flapless approach, which means that the speed you're flying down is a bit quicker than normal. And the wind at the time was variable. So this means that it didn't have a predictable direction it was coming from. It was basically swaying and moving around in multiple different directions. And as I was coming in, I was about 300 feet from the ground. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the airspeed dropped immediately about 15 knots and I got a stall warner on the aircraft. This is obviously not a position you want to be in, but all pilots are trained to deal with this sort of situation. And for this one in particular, a standard stall recovery actually solved the issue and then went straight into a go around, which means you climb away from the approach that you were doing and attempt it again, which I did and landed with no problem the second time. And this moves me on to my final point about turbulence, especially if you're a nervous flyer or nervous of turbulence. So aviation as a whole has become very good at dealing with turbulence. So pilots will always receive weather reports and forecasts for turbulence before they depart on any journey. Any commercial aircraft that you'll fly on will have a weather radar and that will be able to detect if there are any thunderstorms in the area or hidden thunderstorms in, in large clouds. Now when it comes to wind shear, which is extremely dangerous, airports have low level wind shear alerting systems and also terminal Doppler weather radars. Now both of these systems can predict and identify wind shear and those warnings will be sent to pilots so they are aware before they arrive. Also pilots can report wind shear to other pilots and to air traffic control and on modern aircraft they all have predictive wind shear systems which will warn the pilots if there is wind shear ahead and tell them to go around if they're about to fly through it. 
But ultimately, even if all of these systems fail, the pilot is still trained to deal with wind shear and they will just simply carry out their wind shear recovery, which is just max thrust, pitch nose up, and eventually the aircraft will climb away from the ground. So ultimately, turbulence is not dangerous. You shouldn't worry about it. Yes, it's very uncomfortable, but as long as you're strapped in, everything will be fine. But if you have any questions you want to ask me or a deeper discussion on this topic, just drop it in the comments below and I'll try and get back to you or create a new video answering those questions in the future. But as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.